not tell us why he's a five. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Well, I do a SWOT analysis every month awesome. for, my, for my business. Gratitude, I'm, I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. And then in my office, I have a big, kind of a three month, six months. Okay. So I uh, uh, kind of a road map for myself, mm -hmm. and I put the dates of my goals that I want to do and what I, what I want to accomplish. Tina. <laughs> so for anybody who's not familiar with that SWAT acronym, that's SWAT. That's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, both yeah. internally and externally. Yes, all right, awesome, thank you. So the other thing is that working with Mark, I think we can all agree, because Shelly just asked me the question, it's the same thing, it's, we all seem to be floaters, Yeah. right? Because my studio, I mean, Mark's been in my studio, lots of people in my studio, it's, it's there, everything is there, when I'm there, it's a good solid 4, 4.5. Okay. But when, you know, now with the facility <laughs> and coaching I'm doing, out of a pickup truck, and as many as 11 different sites where I am, that 4.5 goes to a 2.5 in a big hurry, right? So that's the okay. problem, is finding a way to carry that with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Okay, my third letter in that app is power up your life with passion and wonder. Power up your life with passion and wonder. You know what? And I think that's really easy to do. It's, it's all around us, you know? It's all around us, the being passionate. You know, I teach I teach language arts in grade eight in grade eight this year, and I I had my students write a poem a few months ago, a free verse poem on any topic they wanted. So I said, well, I should probably write one myself first, just to give them a model. And I wrote one that's called "On the Inside Track." So I didn't realize it at the time, but this poem, the the theme of my poem, really ties into my topic about defining yourself. So, and I and I was looking for. Some, I was up in Edmonton at my hotel and I said, I gotta write this poem. Sat down at the desk for 10 minutes and nothing came. Writer's block. Anybody ever have writer's block? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, two hands. Huh? <laughs> so I got up from my desk and I said, I think I'm gonna check Twitter. So I, whoops, I wanna back it up here. Okay. Yeah, right here, okay. I checked Twitter, Tony Robbins' Twitter account, and this is a tweet that he had back in February. Emotion is created Oh, sorry. Emotion is created by emotion. So to get that passion and wonder in our lives, we had to get some emotion. We had to get some feeling about it. Like, what would it feel like to be whatever you want to be? What would it feel like? What would your day look like? How would you feel as you went about your day? Even though you're working a nine-to-five job. But in your mind, imagine what it feels like. So emotion is created by motion. So, here's my poem, On the Inside Track. It was just a tweet that caused me some deep thinking of its power and leaving me in awe of its simplicity. Emotion is created by motion towards the object of our passion, our pride in who we want to become. It was just a tweet, but its resonance will reverberate on my journey to self-discovery. So, you know, when I was preparing for this speech last night, <laughs> or last week, before that, I thought, well, maybe this poem ties, I think it ties in what I'm trying to say about passion and wonder. Because we're all, I think we're all on that journey to self-discovery. I don't care what our age is. We're all on that journey. We all, I think, you know, uh, I think it was Wallace Wallace, the famous author of Science of Getting Rich once said, you know, we, the best thing we can do for, for the world is to make the most of ourselves. That's the best thing, that's the biggest favor we can do our spouse, our kids, our grandparents. That's the biggest favor we can do them, is make the most of ourselves. I, I don't think that's selfish. I think that's building yourself up so you can be the best person for your spouse, for your girlfriend, boyfriend, whomever. So emotion is created by emotion. Uh, there was a quote from Hen Henry David Thoreau. Are you familiar with that gentleman? Henry David Thoreau, yeah. He said this about, about maximizing each moment. He said, you must live in the present. Launch yourself on every wave. Find your eternity in each moment. That's, that's what we had to do. Each moment is so precious. Each moment of every day is so precious. So I think when we tune into that, when we use that emotion to create some motion in our lives, then we, I, I, then we do what I would call, we tune into the sweet serendipity of life. That's just that, 
Serendipity is, is the pleasurable discovery by accident of, of things that you weren't really expecting. You know, and, and when you do that, you become an inverse paranoid. Ever heard that expression? No, okay. I, I learned that from uh, Brian Tracy. Are you familiar with Brian Tracy, the famous author? He wrote a book called Maximum Achievement, one of the best books I've ever read about 20 years ago. He wrote that. And he says we need to become an inverse paranoid. So be so paranoid about good things happening in our lives that we're, look, like we're expecting it every moment, every day. We're looking, looking around and, Fred, Mary, like what's exciting? What's going on in your life? So we're excited. We're an inverse, like we're paranoid about happiness, success, beauty. Become an inverse paranoid. And then you can really turn, tune into the sweet serendipity. So I want, I want to conclude my speech just to summarize what I've been talking about in my app for defining yourself. You know, what, what are we going to do? You know, I think the first thing that we all need to do is to define or redefine our purpose. Maybe your purpose changed from 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 30 days ago. But redefine our purpose. Like our reason why. Like why, why, are we, why do we get up every morning and do what we do? Why? Tell me, I, like, what's in it for me? Why am I doing it? We need to do that. We need, I think we need to use Zig, Ziglar's six steps for goal setting. I think if you, if you put that practice into your life, it would really help. We also need to, I think, read that chapter six of Tony's book on the bit of power. Anybody, has anybody read that book by Tony? Yeah, you have? Yeah. Awesome book, yeah. I think we need to, at least once, once a month, read a self-help book. Some good starters there. Yeah, just pick one. One a month. And then take one principle out of the book, like Think and Grow Rich. There's like about 95 principles in that, right? Anybody read that book? Yeah, there's like 150 principles in that, right? <laughs> at least. Just take one and, it, and put that to work in your life. We need to follow the tweets and be empowered. Be empowered by some tweets that were, some people that were following on Twitter. Yeah, it's like, it's like I, I can't say enough about Twitter. Can I do a speech on Twitter, like, next fall? Okay. Gratitude, have gratitude. I think gratitude paves the way to sweet serendipity. When we're just grateful. There was a famous stress doctor in Montreal. Uh, Dr. Hans Selye. Ever hear of him? <coughs> yeah, you've heard of him? Yeah, he, he worked in Montreal, he's passed away now. But he said this about gratitude. He said, gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. Gratitude. I read a book there a few months ago called um, Thank and Grow Rich. Thank and Grow Rich by <coughs> Pam Grote. Ever hear of that book? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you have, all right. Thank and Grow Rich, an awesome book about gratitude. And one of the things she said was, every day, find things to be grateful for. So, so I took her up on it when I, when I read the book about a month and a half ago. I found every day now, I'm, I'm walking around, I'm walking up the stairs at work, I'm saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it just, it just, it just helps my day become better. And that's what she said, just say thank you. And just that simple activity is really going to enhance our lives and, and make us uh, really improve our situations. So I think if we, if we follow those principles, we use that app, applying the knowledge of our, of, of our self-help books, our own personal development, we prospect the gems from the quarry of life, and if we power up our life with passion and wonder, I think we'll go a long way, not only to having a life of success, but a life of significance. Mr. Tolstoy. Sharon, please come up and lead us for women of the W. We haven't really done this in this format before. So I'm just going to say that I get to lead us off and wrap us up. That's going to be kind of cool for me. Leonard, 
I have a lot of things and I don't want to steal from everyone. So I'm going to try and pick a few things that I thought you could work on immediately. I really like the idea that you're taking the risk to use the PowerPoint and the mics and it's a different room. I knew that kind of threw you off right away. However, you went ahead and you, you really went with it and you took that risk and congratulations on that point. I think though when you have such a great title, and it was a great title, I was already thinking about what it could be about, your first few words out of your mouth kind of took us down. So come in with a really strong opening and that deals with that great title that you have instead of repeating what the title was. I don't even know if you noticed that. When you look back at the tape, you'll see that. I really encourage you never to do a speech for nothing. This fit into a manual, page through your manuals, find something that it will use it for. There's no reason why you can't. I thought you were way more animated than you usually are, but you still have to work on that. It's, you're a really laid back kind of guy, and so for you, you have to go over the top. And that'll probably be about right. <laughs> I am also going to make one more suggestion. You wanted us to look at the stage, and I thought you used more of it, but it, it seemed that it wasn't always purposeful. So really think about how you're using the stage. I'd like to now turn it over to our second evaluator, who is Flo Sherpanese. Please help me welcome Flo. Leonard, you did so many things well, and they're all written down here. For the sake of time, I'll share with you one area that I thought was a strength and suggest something to consider for future improvement. The thing that stood out the most for me in terms of an area of strength was your expert knowledge about your subject matter. The facility you had when you jumped from different authors, their, their, their books, and you really had that ease about it. And it shows how much research and how well read you are. Now on the flip side of that, I haven't read most of those books. And as an audience member, I wasn't familiar with these authors and, and these thought leaders. And so I felt kind of dumb. <laughs> I felt left out, left behind. I wonder if more explanation, more elaboration, perhaps considering less thought leaders and focusing more on them um, so that it's more inclusive of the audience might be something you want to consider for a future speech. Our third evaluator is Mark Bernard. Leonard, I always love to hear you speak because you're so knowledgeable because you're, you're a reader and you really tap into that. So I'd like to give you some suggestions of what I like what I like really well and some suggestions to watch out for and then to end on really, what I really like. One, I loved the way you used your cue cards. I loved how you brought them up and you were all ready for them and you were prepared. I know Sharon, you might have mentioned that already, I'm not sure, but... I love the, the cue cards, you, and you use them flow like you flow this way. We didn't really notice them, so you did that very well. I love, I love that. I love the way you introduced Jane, your wife. I, we never heard her of her before, so we thought, thought she was a phantom. <laughs> now, something you really got to watch out for, because you asked us to watch for the stage. Look at the video. This is your habit. Oh. You grabbed your belt buckle. Belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> now you watch it because that could become a really bad habit. And if you're and if you have a paid audience, they're gonna go, what are you doing? <laughs> so you have to really watch out for that because that could really deter for you being a paid, a, you know, a serious speaker. 
And also, in the two minutes that you explained for us to do, like the two minutes of that activity, I, my, my strong suggestion is really be clear and give us a strong directive and then like, explain it first, then get the audience to do it. Because you said I have two minutes and then you kind of jumped into it and both Christine and I didn't understand the question. So those are the two things that I want to uh, leave you with. And also, I tell you, watch the tape. I loved it when you talked about the quote from Tony Robbins, your voice, your pitch, when you, you talked about the emotion is created by emotion, you were on, like that passion that Sharon was talking about, really, you were just innately, you just, you were, you just brought it out, I want to see more of that. Watch the tape and, and, and try to emulate that a lot. Our, uh, one, two, three, fourth evaluator. <laughs> Apparently, I can't count. John McDonald. <laughs> Leonard, you have courage to ask for a round robin evaluation. <laughs> and so I want to congratulate you for that, to take, to take the, the opportunity to use the club knowledge to help you as a speaker. The number one thing that I'm impressed with is, yes, you asked for it. And this is what you get. The thing that I liked about your speech. There's an app for that. It's a very catchy name. And you use that well to control the content of your speech, the structure of your speech. That was done very well. But within each of those elements, the thing that I was missing is the personal. You gave a very good description, but in terms of storytelling, the 3D aspect of it. How does it make you feel? What does, what does it mean to you? What, like, to internalize that, and as Mark alluded to, motion and emotion, when, when you got into that, I could see the meaning that it had for you. But within each of those elements of your speech, it would be nice to have a little bit more of a story, not just a description of it. But again, <coughs> I love your courage, I love your content, and thank you for sharing with us. And it looks like you're still okay there, so I'm going to call our last evaluator. <laughs> supposed to be watching for their reaction, make sure they're not too full and not upset by what's going on. So our last evaluator is Abraham George. George. I made a self-help app for you, Leonard. <laughs> uh -oh. It's in three stages. A means, a, and it's all about movement. A means appropriate movement. P means positioning. And the final P means pause. So first of all, for appropriate movement. I liked that you did the slingshot with a big movement. And I thought the big exaggerated movement was appropriate. On the other hand, when you said you were being blocked or impeded, there's an obstacle in the way, your hands came up, they were down here. What I would suggest to you is to have a big, appropriate, exaggerated movement, maybe even <coughs> step back. And that would empower your audience to remember that. So secondly, positioning. And I'm going to build on what Sharon started. I like that you felt you seemed comfortable up here and you were moving around like you were a teacher in your classroom. Sharon mentioned being purposeful. What I would suge suggest to you is when you give a point, stay there and finish your entire point before you move on to the next point. When you're talking about Zig Ziglar and there are six points, you had a couple of points here, then you moved over here, then you moved back. What you could have done was say all six points in one place or one, two, four, five, six. And that would empower your audience to remember those points and match them up with the places on the stage. Final point is about the pause. I loved your final line and I love that you came to the middle of the stage to say, don't, 
a life of success, live a life of significance. I suggest to you, as soon as you finish that great line, pause before you hand it over to the Toastmaster rather than live a life of significance, Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, okay. So think about the appropriate positioning, your placement, and the pause. Get me out, of, out from behind the app and go ahead and apply it. <laughs> I'm just going to wrap it up with a couple of things, Leonard. I thought you were very vulnerable with the anecdotes. You could even have even more anecdotes because that's the part that is so interesting to an audience. And I would strongly suggest that you be careful on this little stage. I've been caught up in it too because it's round, it holds all the sound, and so you just have to project a little more. I really thoroughly enjoyed the speech. I'll return control to our GE.